Welcome to chapter 6 of interactive statistics methods in which we are dealing with sigma and product notation. We have our add sign letting you know you need to commit this chapter to memory. It's vitally important. The thing that you need to know about summation notation is that Greek nomenclature for addition and indeed pi for multiplication are used in a vast number of mathematics but in statistics the Greek letter sigma is vital. You're going to find that sigma notation or summation at the addition notation is used throughout mathematics but highly regarded and highly used in inferential statistics. So the breaking point if you will between descriptive statistics which are used to basically describe data sets and a lot of what you covered in chapter 5 graphic, graphically pre presenting data and the inferential statistics, the beginnings of calculating the data, starts with understanding summation notation. Now it's vital to understand that in the vast majority of statistical courses you're going to find uh, over the years that summation notation is used more than elementary courses which basically are trying to get you to understand the formula. The more you advance in statistics and as you take different courses or you look in the research literature you're going to find a lot of summation notation. It is the base nomenclature that is used to indicating air addition, the addition excuse me, of a series of numbers. All right. It was first founded by a mathematician named Euler, though his name is spelled uh, E-U-L-E-R, around 1755 and then Gauss whom you saw in the previous uh, chapter with the Gaussian curve or the normal curve used the same nomenclature when he began to use pi for multiplication and again these are capital Greek letters sigma and pi so when we look at sigma here capital sigma it indicates addition whenever you see it so don't get, be confused because there's uh, multiple ways because you can use algebra to break down and restructure forms and formula and I have a chapter in this book that talks about the many different ways for example that you can represent variance or standard deviation they all will give you the same calculation but the way the formula are represented all comes down to summation notation. Generally, if we use summation notation, we refer to it as a more complex formula, showing you all of the mathematical principles that are going on. If we don't use summation notation, it's generally known as a more computational uh, formatted formula that you would use to comp compute the numbers in the data set. So summation notation has a general form. So sigma summation notation has an index, a limit, a sum and and sigma. What this means is start with the first data point in the data set and on some arbitrary number in the data set when the data is organized. Generally that's highest or lowest or lowest to highest and all of the numbers and variations in between. And from that you can then indicate what is the first and generally this, sometimes this is the last but it doesn't have to necessarily be. The limit can change and then the sum and is what the actual variable and here in this case we're starting with the first number in the data set and continuing till the sum and, the, excuse me the limit ends now the sum and can actually be uh, have a constant here so you may have to multiply a, a certain number or add or divide to each individual number in the data set addition is last starting point stopping point sum add whatever the calculation is and then add all of the series of numbers in that set according to the index and the limit. You need to pay attention to the index and the limit. Could start with the third number in the data set or end with the sixth. It could be 20 numbers. So you need to pay attention. Remembering first to organize then recognize how this is represented. Now this can switch up. You can have the index to the immediate right, the limit, then the sum and, and then the actual sigma. So start, stop, do the calculation, add all of the numbers according to this and this together. Start, stop, do the calculation, add all the numbers according to this and this in the data set. So let's take a look at that. All right. Here we have a very large sigma. All right. And if we roll down a little further, we see we have an index, a limit, a sum in, and then adding everything together. And here is a key or a sigma, sigma notation, summation notation legend. All right. Index, the limit, the sum and, 
and then sigma, the addition of all of them together. Beginning, ending point, calculation, adding them all together. So if we have a data set from 1 to 9 and we want to do a calculation where we have uh, sigma 3 of x sub i, here we have starting with the first number in the organized data set 1 through 9, then ending with the ninth, then multiplying each number, each individual number starting with the index point which is indicated as the first number in the data set, ending with the ninth, though there's only nine numbers, and then lastly add them all together. And that is how you read summation notation. Okay, so there's a lot of different formulas. We talk about that algebraically in this chapter, how things can be broken down, give you some examples of some sample data sets, how that will work so that you have a good understanding of that. Go through the chapter, take a look very carefully, perform some of the calculations and practice this. The only difference between summation notation and product notation is the pi means to multiply. You use the S or the uppercase sigma for sum or add and you use pi for product or multiply. Same principles, just in product notation, you're multiplying. So go through this chapter thoroughly, read it thoroughly. Your exercises will give you some good examples. It ends talking about Riemann sums and things and getting you ready to understand how through summation notation we begin to represent things such as a normal curve. So the chapter will end then talking about product notation which is used primarily to identify data distributions and you'll see a lot of different things here and uh, equity between the two and a lot of different formula and how things can be changed so go through this chapter thoroughly take a very good look at it and it's going to end in talking about computational statistical formula versus analytical and analytical statistical formula use summation notation computational does not still has a large Greek letter sigma but it won't have the index and the limit pretty much represented most of the times so, but you, if you understand that a lot of the mathematical formulas in particular the, st the statistical formulas won't confuse you alright so watch that very carefully and we're gonna move into chapter 7 as we continue to go through interactive statistics methods